just going to take a few more minutes before we get started. Let everybody get set up. Just a few more minutes. Can we ask everybody that's at the back to come front, please? Darren, turn on number 10 a little bit, please. What brothers do we get we come close right <laughs> we don't sit apart because i need you to cover my back while i cover yours and you cover me then, right is that what we do Amen. so that's what we need today while we wait for the musician to set up just make yourself if there's anyone that needs water or anything just put, raise your hand please yes everybody good water um While we wait for the worship team to get themselves set up. Did everybody enjoy the worship last night? Amen. Amen. It was also good to see the prophet on the drum. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen him on drums. <laughs> Come on. He, he did a run. He, let me say, the prophet literally killed the drums <laughs> last night. But... It, the spirit moved. The spirit moved. And so I, I left here feeling filled last night. Not just with the food, but with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So we're just going to get them some time to get up, set up. Good one.
interesting one too. Can we stand in the presence of the Lord, please? Come on, come on, give me some background music. He said, born, born, born again. That's right, come on. Born, born. Say it again one more time. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. One more time now. Born, born. Of the water, born of the water, spirit and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. Let me hear you. Born of the water, spirit and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. Born Let me water. hear you. Born of the water, spirit and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. Born of the water, spirit and the blood. Come on, worship, but take over. Come on. I've got my mind.
come on, come on. If you want to see Jesus one day, one day, one day. How many of you know that that day is very soon? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Come on, lift up your hands for a while. Let's praise him. Let's honor him. Come on, wave to the sky. In the name of Jesus, he is here. Oh, Hallelujah. He is the king of kings and the king of glory. Hallelujah. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is a mighty God. Hallelujah. We came here to glorify the name of the Lord. Are you tired, man? Hallelujah. Are you tired this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, he is excited and he can do a great thing in our lives. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Praise the Because I believe something is going to happen today. Double, double. Something going to happen. Double, double. Somebody say to his neighbor, double, double. 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 Okay, come on. Hey, my God is good. Oh. Hey, my God.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Men of God, good morning, good morning. I give the all the only all the praise to the Lord our Father who wake us up this morning. Because of He, you are standing here. You can testify what He has done into your own life. Let them raise up of hand and pray in tongues in the five moments. Pray like never before. Because we are men of valor. We are the strong men. Let we begin to raise our voice. Let we begin to bombard heaven with our praises this morning. Riba bo sutura sata, riba o sutura sata rababasa, riba o sutura basi, riba bo bo sutura basi taraboso, ruha bo sutara basa, rebe sutura sata raboso ta, riba o sutura kaba sata raboso, riba bo bo sutura basa ta, riba bo bo sutoro, ribu sutara rabasa, rebe bo sutoro, riba o sutara basa ta, rebe be come on. Pray, Rusa Tarabo Soto, pray, Rabo Soto Rabba, Riba Bobo Soto Rabba, Riba Bobo Soto, and pray, pray, I don't hear your voice, pray, Rusa Tarabo Sata, Ribo Soto Rabba, Rita Tarabo Sata, Riba Soto Rabba, Riba Soto Rabba, Riba Soto Rabba, Riba Soto Rabba, Riba Soto Rusa Tarabo Sata, Riba Soto Rabba, Riba Soto Rabba, Riba Soto Rabba, Riba so, Father God, I gave you praise this morning. Father God, I bless your mighty name, Father God. Father God, I praise you. Father God, I honor you this morning, Father God. Father God, I thank you that you are waking us up, Father God. To proclaim that you are the Alpha, you are the Omega. You do the God day, Father God. You do the God day till the end of the earth, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. I praise you, Father God. Father God, I bless every man here today, Father God. I bless the world from this room, Father God. I thank you for the prophet of the house, Father God. I bless him, Father God. I cover him under the blood, Father God. I thank the apostle of this house, Father God. I bless him, Father God. I ask you to cover the man here, Father God. The man who goes to the who's going to receive us, Father God. The man who's going to deliver the word, Father God. To show us the wisdom. To thank you, Father God. To be to, to teach us, Father God, how to see things, Father God. And I thank you. For every word to come out of the, out the, out the word of the man's mouth, Father God. I thank you and I thank them, Father God, this morning. And I cover them, Father God, under the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. So, Father God, I give you praise and I give you honor. Father God, I bless your mighty name of Jesus. Our Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are waking us up this morning. Father God, I bless your mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, use the men, Father God, in the three days come from us, Father God. I praise you and I honor you, Father God. Father God, let the Holy Spirit move in this room this morning, Father God. For every word, Father God. For every word, Father God. That every pain, every pain, Father God, that you will deal with the man, Father God, to be free in you. And the Lord say, you are free. And if the people are come, you are free and you are free indeed. Because the Bible teaches us, if you want to be free, you need to proclaim the Jesus. Christ is our Savior. So, Father God, I bless you and I thank you, Father God, for the glory of God into this heart, into this room. And I bless your mighty name of Jesus, Father God, because the strong men need to begin to stand up. The men, the strong men, need to be free this morning, Father God. I bless the mighty name of Jesus into this house. I bless for every man. I thank you. I bless every pastor of this room, Father God. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I seal this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. In the cup of the men, Father God, that they may be free, Father God. When they came to worship you, Father God, that they were like never before. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Somebody say freedom. Freedom. Tell your neighbor freedom. Freedom. Tell your neighbor freedom. Freedom. Tell somebody else freedom. Freedom. That seems to be the theme of this weekend. So say freedom. Freedom. I will be free. I will be free. When I leave this place on Monday. 
in the name of Jesus. We're getting ready to introduce our panel today. I want everyone to know that this is a safe space for men by men. Amen. We've made sure that all the ladies are... <laughs> They'll be back later. Can you just give me something nice and slow? Soft, nice and slow. I want to bring on the panel. But before I do, I want to welcome everyone inside the house today. On behalf of Apostle Anne, who will be here later, we welcome each and every one of you in the house of Birmingham. Today is, I am excited to be here. If you've not been to any of the round tables before, Prophet, have you noticed we no longer had a the little table anymore? We are growing. Yes. We are expanding. And um, I was in Tilburg's men conference, and Brother Leonard gave up a, a, his own testimony. And each and every one of us has had a testimony from this round table that started about three years ago, Prophet? Or two years ago, about two, three years ago. And we hope when you leave here today, you too will have a testimony in the name of Jesus. So I want you to put your hands together while I welcome the panel. First, we have Apostle Chris. Take a seat anyway. I call Pastor Herman, one of our surprise guests. <laughs> Pastor Brent, who's on keyboard. Also, we have Pastor Ben, who's on bass. Come on, gentlemen, you can take take a rest. Yes, yes, Give me yes. a finger rest. <laughs> Thank you very much, worship team. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. I want to honor everybody in this house today, the leaders of this house and the visitors. We honor you on behalf of Birmingham and welcome. You may be seated. We're going to get started straight away. Wait a minute. I left somebody. Prophet Rakim. Come on. <laughs> when the prophet started this round table um, a couple of years ago, with a f just a few of us, we probably didn't envision that it would be like this today. Can I have everybody come closer, please? Fill up the first two rows if possible. Fill up the first two rows. Today, our round table, if you've been to Tilburg or Amsterdam, I think it is. It was done in Amsterdam also. Tilburg, just Tilburg. Okay. Um, let me put some more mics on the table. It is a place for us men to discuss and talk about some things we sometimes don't feel comfortable speaking out to public or speaking to other family member. But we are brothers. S tell your neighbor, I am my brother's keeper. Brother's Say to somebody else, I am my brother's keeper. <laughs> and I'm going to ask Prophet Rakim if he could just open up for us and introduce everything, and it's going to be, um, while I do that, I'm going to give everybody a piece of paper where you could write down one question. One question of you. Evangelist Karen, can you help me with this? While Prophet Joachim introduce everything. Amen. Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Yes. Listen, as uh, the deacon said, um, there's no ladies around. Some of your wife there, she's all the way in Holland at the conference right now. So I want us to have a good discussion. Uh, I believe it's it's good to keep for the panel. Maybe let's keep the answered the answers. I don't want to say short, but uh, as as efficient possible. And that we don't make a whole story around it because uh, I believe there's a lot of things to discuss. 
So I think we should keep our answers short and sweet and straight to the point. Yeah. Um, please be yourself. As as the ans as the questions that you believe that even us we don't have an answer for. Those are the questions you must ask because that's how we provoke heaven to answer. Amen. So uh, I believe this is a day to break taboos, to speak about the uh, unspeakable. And uh, that being said, I believe there are some points already, right? That yes. Uh, amen. So then I hand it back over to you, right? Yes, sir. So, we're going to get straight into it. The first question, and these are some of these are very anonymous, is, and I w you anyone from the panel could jump in if they feel they, they could answer this. What is your responsibility as a man in your home? Amen. Anyone from the panel could jump in? Or should we start with Pastor Brent? <laughs> What is our responsibility? Yes. What is your responsibility as a man in your home? Um, I would like to think that we are the priest, but that is easily said. But what does the priest have to do? Um, go forth as the protector of the family. Be the shepherd to protect the family and be the one to break open new ground so that you can excel with your family. Amen. Pastor Herman, same question. Can everybody, you could keep your mic on. Yes, uh, take care of your family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, take care of your family uh, and lead your family. Amen. Um, Apostle Chris, you want to jump in on this one? I think um, all that said, providing for your family mm -hmm. and be sure your family is safe. Pastor Ben? Uh, I agree with all the speakers who said something the same thing, but I think it is important for the husband to make sure that the home is a safe haven. Mm. You make sure that your home is, a, and you're choosing, God set uh, us up like the protector from the house, so you have to take care of your house, everything that is in it. It is a responsibility you should take very serious. Amen. Prophet? Amen. Yet, so the most of the answer has been said, uh, but I believe it's important. The Bible says this. It says that God will supply according to all our needs. Many times we as husbands, fathers, we might think, and we had a discussion this morning about it, we might think that we know what they need, but many times we give to our family what we think they need, but sometimes they need something else. So, you are, as a father, you are not just a provider. You are one that discovers what is the need for my child? What is the need for my wife? No one who has multiple children. Now, you need to realize that every child has a different need. If you give to the one child the same thing you give to the other, you might be missing in your giving. Amen? So I believe we as men have to come to a place to discover what is it that my child needs my my son needs something different than my daughter uh, and i need to be there for both but but what i should be giving might be different amen come on give him a round of applause <laughs> i think another uh, addition to that question should be do we have responsibilities in the home because some people feel they don't have responsibilities. Shouldn't that be another question? Do we have, we know we have responsibilities and we should have responsibilities, but sometimes men, I say this because I can only talk for the men, we are in our home pretending we don't have responsibilities and rely on the ladies to take care of the stuff. R am I correct? Yeah, yeah? Okay. So, the first thing is to realize that we have 
responsibilities. If it's one thing that I know in the UK, most of the men, most of the women have the bills in their name, which means she has all the authority. I don't know about in your country if it's the same. <laughs> most of the women, if the electric, somebody need to speak to the gas company, it's the wife they'll speak to. Right, Prophet? I, mean, I don't know if it's the same in your country. Come on, jump on <laughs> in on this one. <laughs> it, it, it is like that. One thing I want to say about that, um, because uh, you will have many times that uh, we let women do a lot and we're not doing it. Now, I believe this. You should never expect your wife to do anything that you're not willing to do. There's a difference between being a boss and a leader. A boss tells you what to do. A leader shows you what to do. Meaning, if I want my wife to do certain things, I must wi be willing to do them themselves. Are we listening? Yeah. So, if I want her to clean up, I must be a clean person as well. If I want her to, 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 to manage the house, I have to be a manager of the house as well. Many times we expect our counterpart to do things that we are not willing to do. Uh, a, a big discussion, as you said, is finances. Um, many men are not good in finance. But if you're the provider of the house, these are things you must learn. These are must things you must acquire. Th there are certain things you cannot leave over to the wife if you are calling yourself a provider. Amen. Give the prophet a round of applause today. <laughs> I've just got a few more before I open the floor to everybody. You get a chance to ask a question. So please write your questions down um, that you want to be you want to hear some answer for today. Amen. The next question we have that came in, it says, will you take over the household when your wife is not there? Uh, Pastor Herman? I think uh, that is uh, something you have, to, you have to do. If your, your wife not at home or in, uh, on vacation, that you have to take over. It's just what Prophet say, uh, said, uh, we have to give the example. We have to take the lead in, uh, also in, in that and that we will show uh, you are not here, but everything is going uh, forward. Because some men like, okay, she is not home, I am sit. Then she came back and she will do the rest. You, can lo you look for problem. <laughs> you look for problem. Because when the wife is not ho at home, uh, you take your position and do you have to do in the house, clean the house, cook for her, because we have to. But when the Bible says that, love your your, uh, your 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 wife that is also in it is uh, this my uh, question amen apostle chris yeah i i think when you have a good marriage um, you do the most things together so when my uh, when i'm home and my wife cleans i help her clean the house maybe i don't do everything but we have good relation and we make uh, we do the things together um, it is not like your wife go on a mission and then th she's away for 10 days and after 10 days she come home and your house looks like a junk uh, you lost 20 kilos because you have no food and you look like a like a like a like one who is living on the street that is not not possible you have to be sure after 10 days your, your health is good your house is clean, and when your wife come home, the house is looks better than when she leaves. So that is, uh, I think, very important in a relationship. Amen. Um, Pastor Ben? I almost lost the question. What was the question again? <laughs> your, part what was it? your partner is living, uh, living on a mission. Can you take care of everything? Oh, the whole mission. Was that was the question, right? Yeah, that was the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that what Chris, uh, Apostle Chris said a very key thing. You are married, and I think in a good marriage, and in a household, you have some, uh, how you say, agreements, if you will. There is not such thing as a man part and a woman part, if you will. If you are busy with something, you're working, as your wife is not working because she's doing the household thing. But if she's on a mission or something else, shouldn't you care for your home? It's your own home. So you have to realize that you're doing it together. You don't do it to please another, but you, you have to be communicating. You help out. 
It is just what you make at a time when this is what you gonna do, this is gonna do. And you have to give to God. And you know this is one of the biggest complaints women have. This is one of the biggest complaints. They don't trust us to stay in the house. Because it's gonna get messy. They think it's gonna well, they think it's gonna get messy. So it is very important. That's I like what you said earlier, Prophet. It's not what we think they want. What actually do they need? And this is a big thing for women. So for eight fellas with wives or the one who are looking to get wives, this is very important. Women need to know they could trust you, count on you, lean on you with even stuff like this. Amen? Pastor Chris? What you, I think what you just said is true, but if you do the whole year, let's see what you do in the house, give her no chance that you can change what they do. But if they don't see the things you do, or every time when they have to do this, have to bring something, you run off. Oh, I have to go to church. No, I have to go to shop. Hey, wait, wait, my car is full. I have to go to work. That's uh, an explanation you can do, but every time you could see what you do in the household, you run off. Then they want to change what you do. Yeah. So she must be able to trust you. Yes. Amen? Come on, give them a round of applause for that one. <laughs> the next one question we have before we open up to the floor, is if that's okay with you gentlemen, is um, what's a man's role in your local church, in your local ministry? What is a man's role? Let's start with you, Pastor Brent. Um, I think that men should be involved in all aspects of ministry and in the church. That means that you should find men uh, involved in some way from the uh, children's department to the cleaning, uh, not only the the jobs that are inside, not only the one to hold the microphone, but you can also do the vacuum. You can also uh, stand at uh, the parking place to direct traffic. So all, everything that pertains to church, you should be involved in some way or the other. And you have to be visible as men. Why? Because God has spoken to men in the beginning. He has given the mandate to men. And um, when you see the tabernacle, uh, Aaron and his sons were to minister unto God in the tabernacle. So men are called to function within the church. Amen. Prophet? Same question. What do you think a man's role is in the local church? Um, I have a lot of issues with men in the local church. And that is because we are very arrogant. We have a problem with serving. Um, one thing, one of the main things I can't stand is, um, especially because we as men, we are built different. And we are seeing women doing hard labor, and we just watch them do it. Right. We see women stack chairs, and you just sit there and, and, and talk. To be honest, it's a, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. And uh, I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it many times. And if this happens in, in my church, I rebuke that openly. Th th these, these are things um, that are disgraceful. And I, I think Pastor Brent said something very key. Men should be influencing the church. You are not a man just for your own house. You're a man for your church, for your community. You're a father, not just for your own house. You're a father. Listen, if you are a father, you're not just a father for your own children. You are a father for all the children in the church. You're a father for all the children in the community. But the problem, because of arrogancy, we want to watch our own children, and we see other children do something, and we don't say anything about it. Listen, if, if there's a single mother in the church and she's struggling with her children, you should be a father for those children. Are we listening? Yes. Um, we, we, are, we, are, we are too much into our own thing and not realizing that the, the, the first level uh, 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 in, a, in a man's ministry is the level of servanthood. Not priesthood, servanthood. Come on, come on. We all want to be priests, but we don't want to be servants. Come on, come on now. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. We all want to have authority, but we don't want to lift someone else up. And it is because we are arrogant, and we need to change. And I say we, because I include myself in this. Yeah. We need to change. Uh, we need to stop being so self-entitled. And if you look how much men are here, amen, the, the place actually should be shaking. The place should be stirring, but we are, we are busy with ourselves. 
and always expecting someone else to do something that actually we should be doing. So in the local church, men should be everywhere. We should invade every department. Why? Because men bring balance. Let me say that again. Men bring balance. I have nothing against women. I love women. I love women in ministry. But just females alone in a department is imbalanced. You need to have balance in every part of the ministry. That's why God chose a man and a woman to what? Balance things out. The Bible says an uneven balance is an abomination to me. So we as men, we should be influencing the department and we, s we see a lack of it. Uh, 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 how can it be that another lady is carrying pastor's Bible and, 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 and bags? Well, we are men. We should be doing these things. You know, uh, uh, w w w when we come to the church, it should be a man standing in the front. Greeting, listen, this is my house. Amen. When you come to Tilbury, there's a man standing there. Why? Because the man represents the house. Listen, the, 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 the spirit, it's not about the people, the spirit knows you're entering a house of a man. Amen. I won't take too long, but that, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's my part. <laughs> Amen. Come on, give him a round of applause for that. Give him, give him a clap for that. I'm very interested to know the type, the questions that, that the men written. Oh, go on, Pastor Herman. If men uh, cannot do that at home, serve at home, how they will do that in the church? Come on now, come on now. Come on now. The church starts at home. If you cannot serve at home, you run away. Your, your wife cannot talk to you. Your children cannot, they don't see you. You are working. You have to go to the church. You have to do this. You are very busy. How do you want to function in the, in, in, in the local church? Is I think it is something we have to teach the men to uh, uh, set things in order at home with the wife, with the children, with the family, and then you will see the result in the church. Can I, can I say Pastor something? Pastor Brent, go on, Pastor Brent. That's why I find um, these gatherings so important because um, men try to shy away from being able to talk. Many men do not know how to talk to their own wives. Um, but because of these types of gatherings, we get ideas, we get inspiration, we can seek help. Because somewhere there will be somebody that starts a conversation about the topic that you need information on. So that's why it's so important that we are here together. We are able to speak. And sometimes um, there are a few new guys came with us from, from Eindhoven. I tell them, you know, Maybe you would not be the one to uh, start the conversation. Maybe you would not even be the one to um, be active in the conversation, but you can listen. And when you listen, you hear how your brother um, passed through hard stuff with whatever it is. And maybe you're in the middle of it. And by, him, by you listening, you can hear what it is you're supposed to do or what is an example to be able to come out of the situation. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a clap for that. I want Pastor to Ben? Yes, I want to add to it. Everything that is said is true and correct. But uh, just like I said yesterday that we were on the ship on the boat, and I met his brother, I started talking to him. And one problem that Mary had, they don't approach each other. Well, most of the time, if you see men talk, it's maybe but we like men must step out of the so-called discomfort zone that we don't approach each other and talk because if men more care for each other talk to each other come out of that isolation then you will see that it will grow because now man most of the time they are comp competitive against each other As the um, apostle, um, um, let me say, Prophet Rakim said it too, is the pride that they have in each other. And if we start laying that down and get a submissive spirit and serve each other, come to serve, not to come to rule, then the churches will be free. If we start inviting them, taking care of them, talk to them on man to man level, then you will see results. Because now, if they can, they avoid church. Of course, I don't do this. But then they have the good examples of how we are here talking about this. And the Bible
is a fruit of God. You are a new in the Lord. So you have to start that way. And it kept going to get interested in the Bible, in what the Word says, and then do this. So it's all good. Amen. Give him a round of applause. Give him a clap. I think, you know, listening to that, I just want to say, the men who are here, it's not a vacation. This weekend is not a vacation. You, you should take this opportunity, and even also who are here, who are coming in, in this place, this weekend, to tell yourself, I'm going to school. I'm going to learn something this weekend. I must leave this place different from when I came in. And this is why forum like this is very important. This is why gathering like this is very, very important. So don't think of it as a vacation that I've just left my wife or left Holland to come to, I'm going to the UK. No, no. Come and receive something while you're here this weekend. Many of you from different branches, so you don't get to fellowship all the time. This is the place. This weekend, you have today, you have tomorrow. So... We're going to get ready to go into the questions. I want to do... Do we need a translator, if anybody? Do we anybody need a translator? Can I, can I do one question? <coughs> Most of the men here, I think, work here. Okay? Most of them, are you all work here? Now? About... try to help in the house. But then I went sick. I had problems with my heart. Then no job anymore. Then I stayed at home. Then I take over the household from my wife. I really, you don't have to believe me, but I have learned in the last four years that running a household more than working 80 hours in a week. Really? I, I, I have to learn, I take over, because my wife has her business. So I take it over, and I have to learn this, what she all did, did in the house. And now I know, I'm really proud that they say, the woman works harder than the man. Because when we finish jo the job, and we come home, and we do nothing anymore, it's over. But when they have a job, and they go home, they have to do a lot of stuff to feed their family. A household running, running a household, everything what's in between it is a lot of work. So we as men, we make a promise when we marry, in good times, in bad times, in good health, and when we're sick, but we have all made that promise, we do these things together for the rest of your life. Not push it away. Because you have to try this. Take over a few days the household for your wife. And then you're going to learn what it is to work hard. It's a lot of work. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a round of applause for that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get, we're going to open the floor for questions. I'm going to start with this side and move over. What we'll do, we'll do like this. You stand up, you ask your question, and one person from the panel could answer. Yeah, is that okay? Because we've got so many men and uh, everybody has a question. So let me start with this brother right here. Brother Raymond. I think he's still writing his question. <laughs> it's a book. Have you got a question, Brother Raymond? Bless us, bless us. Um, I have a question. Because um, this year I will be married 50 years. And... There are a lot of questions I'm working uh, with myself because every day is different. And you have to learn from your brothers and your men of God. But you know, um, because I'm going to the church with my wife and also my children, and I, 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 lo I love to ask 
Many times I talk with Pastor Ben, many times we call not only to talk to Brother Kirkman, see how he's doing, but after all these years, 